Welcome back to another CG Figures tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about doing something a little unconventional in Blender. We're going to use Blender for figure placement. Now, right out of the box, I'll say this is something that you would be better suited to likely doing in Adobe InDesign, but Blender is free, and there's a number of little advantages along the way that we're going to see. So we're going to go ahead and get started, and we will delete our default cube, and we will also delete this little default light. We're going to go ahead and put in a plane, and generally speaking, when I do this, all of my graphs and data as much as possible are done with the same resolution and dimensions. And if you can do that, it's going to clean everything up very, very nicely. So I'll go ahead and hit number pad seven to come into top view. And I know that my figures are all going to have a sort of aspect ratio of 0.8 to 0.7. So S, X, 0.8, and then S, Y, 0.7. And all of my figures are going to look like this. So when I go ahead and add the texture, everything's going to be perfect. Now, what I usually use this for is actually creating grid layouts. So if I have 15 figures that I need to put in an array, I'm going to simply come to the modifier properties, add an array modifier, offset by say 1.1, and let's say that I want to do a three by or a five by three. I can simply come here, come here, add a second array, go minus 1.1 in the y direction, zero in the x direction, and just like that, I would have a grid and everything would be perfectly laid out. Again, this is something that you can do in InDesign with placement, but if I'm going to be making a large panel figure that I want to put in a poster in PowerPoint, say, or I'm going to be doing it for a talk, or even just a simple publication or as a figure, particularly in the SI, this is going to give me clean placement of all of these, and it can be done in Blender with just a few simple tricks. So let's go ahead and do this. Now, I'm going to say that I actually don't want this. I'm just going to do a two by two grid. So you can go ahead, two by two, and you want to have this sorted before you go ahead and apply these, but I'm happy with this, so I'm going to go ahead and apply both the array modifiers. From here, what I'll do is I'll tab into edit mode, and I'll hit P, separate by loose parts. Now this is going to give me all four different planes. There's a few things I'm going to do to clean them up right away. First, I'll box select them all, right click, and choose set origin to geometry, just so that each one has its own origin. If I was being meticulous about this and I was going to use this figure or send it to someone else, I would absolutely rename each of these planes to be whatever figure I wanted. So I would say graph A or figure B, diagram C, and let's say for the last one, image D. And once you have all of these, now we're in shape and we can actually start doing the shading. And the shading is really where you have to sort this out in Blender to make it a usable figure. We're going to go ahead, drag an open window, and I'll just hit Shift F3 to come into the materials window. Now, go ahead, hit new for a new material, and we're actually going to delete this principled BSDF. We do not need it. Make sure that you have Node Wrangler installed. So as always, edit, preferences, add-ons, and in the search bar, Node Wrangler. Once that's there, go ahead, grab this material output node, hit Control T, and that will bring up all of these nodes. We're going to drag them to the side, and now we're going to add in a image texture. So for the purposes of this video, I've just created some very simple random nonsense. So we have this generated SEM image that I made in a previous tutorial. We'll go ahead and look at this in material preview. You can see that I've got that figure right there. We're going to go ahead and basically just do the same thing three more times. So we'll add another image texture. This one can be uh, random data. So this is just fabricated data that I made using just a website generator. Obviously don't fabricate your own data, but for this purpose, it's just better perhaps than using published data. And again, once more, more random data, that's good. And this last one, we'll use some actual data that was unpublished, but just looks clean. So we'll come down here, figure placement, and I'll use even more random data. Now, one of the things that you're gonna notice right away with all of these is they look very, very gray. That's because when Blender is actually setting up the space that it wants to render in, it does it with a very specific color grade. So come to the Render Properties tab, down to Color Management, and what we're going to do is actually change this View Transform from Filmic to Raw. And now you can see that's actually brought out sort of the true color of all of these. Since most graphs tend to be on white backgrounds, this is very important. If you were to try and render this, and it didn't have raw for the uh, view transform, 
this would come out looking gray and worse if you had kept that generic light in there it would actually reflect the light you don't want to use the principled bsdf for similar reasons the light will interact with the plane depending on where it is and we don't want that but once you've got it in raw we're actually pretty much good to go you could zoom in you could see that if your original image for the graph is sufficiently high resolution we're in good shape i can zoom in pretty far on this and i'll show you how to set this up for an actual render so let's assume this is the way that I want this panel figure to go. I would, if I was being meticulous, again, I would also rename each of these materials. So which one are we on right now? Material 04, I would call this uh, even more random data, since that was the name of the file. I would call this uh, SEM image, et cetera, et cetera. So each of these would be named, and that would be very clean. Now, from here, we're actually going to set up the render. So we do have a camera in the scene. It's right over here. I'm going to hit Control alt number pad 0 to come into top view, and under my camera settings, I'm actually going to change from perspective to orthographic. This way, I don't have any perspective issues whatsoever, and I can just bring this orthographic scale in until it's just capturing the edge of my figure, and now we'll actually do just a little bit more render setup. So let's come to the output properties. I don't really need 1920. That's a lot of extra space, so I'll drop that 1080, and then I'll address Sorry, then I will adjust the scale accordingly so that we are really just focusing on what we want to do, hitting G and X to move the camera and adjusting that scale once again. This is obviously not perfectly square because my original images are not perfectly square. If they were perfectly square, then this would look a little bit cleaner, but this is the format that I have always output my figures in, in terms of aspect ratio. Finally, once we've got our render properties set up, this is all fine. The one thing that I think is usually good to add is just having film transparent. So if I were to render this, and we'll go ahead and do that now with F12, you can see there is just an alpha background. So if I save this as a PNG, then I can put this into a program such as PowerPoint, and things can actually stick through this background. It will go over the white perfectly, assuming that this background that I have from my graphing software, uh, in my specific situation I use Origin, that will also be white. Now there's a few things to note here. One is that if you were to zoom in on this, you could see that looks pretty atrocious. Now, for most purposes, you won't really have to zoom in that far, but if you do, so let's say this is a poster and you're gonna blow it up a few hundred times, just take this number here, or this 100%, and change it to a higher number. So 500 would be wild overkill, but right now, you can see that if we go ahead and hit F12 again to render, this time it'll take just a little bit longer, but that shouldn't really be too much of a problem. There we go, we've waited it out, and now you can see we're zoomed right in on this, and again, that was only six seconds to do, but we now have a pretty high resolution that we could get away with. You could probably put this on a poster. You could certainly put this in a presentation on most screen sizes without really losing any of the quality of this image. And so just like that, we have this nice way of creating these panel figures that are evenly spaced very in a very, very controlled way using array modifiers, Everything is nicely labeled. The reason that I quite like Blender for this is because, again, Blender is free. So you can send this to pretty much anyone who has a copy of Blender, if it's version 2.8 or further on, and they will be able to use all of this. They'll be able to access your data. If it's well labeled, then it's very clean for them to manipulate this figure, all those sorts of benefits. The last thing that is important here is that if you are going to send this to someone else and they don't actually have the original image files, you can actually build those into the file by simply coming to File, and then External Data, and what you want to do is pack all into .blend. And if you select this box, what that has done is pack four files. Those four files are the image files. So I can actually now send just the blend file to someone else and they will have not just this nicely arrayed panel figure that they could put on a transparent background, render in high resolution, put in figures, presentations, papers, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, but they also have all of the original data files with it, at least the images. And so that is a nice little benefit that you kind of don't have necessarily in some other situations. Again, not necessarily the best pick for this, probably better off using something like InDesign, but just something that I haven't really seen done in Blender, but something you can absolutely do. So, as always, thanks for coming out. If you found this useful, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues, hopefully use this to go make some figures, and until next time, you have yourself a great old day.